So we're here, another bike. we're here at the heat treater, right? Right. This is where the magic happens? Right. So what's what's the process here, Mike, in a nutshell? So that pipe just got done. It's going to roll out of the way. These are due to be done. This is going to be our Ultra 3 or our Guardian boom pipe, our, our uh, Super 7 gauge, right? Yep. Super 7 gauge. So they're going to, one of these pipes is going to drop on here. This block is an electromagnetic it's got a uh, it runs a magnetic field the magnetic field is so strong it's going to heat this pipe up super red hot super fast as it passes through this is the cooling glance there the water jet you can see the little like mushroom head on the top there the water comes out sprays backwards so as it comes through that foil it's going to be red hot hit that water lance and you're going to see it turn you know back to its normal you know from cherry red to its regular color, you know, very quickly. This way we get a good consistent heat around the perimeter and it doesn't, you know, it's not just heated from the bottom. So we get a better, more consistent heat treat here. And I'm gonna put my earplug back in because this is gonna be loud, but you're gonna see that pipe is being fed right now through here. We also, uh, we'll get over there and look at, let's look at it real quick. There's a little wheel that's right there that leaves a mark on it. And we'll get we'll get some video of that here in a minute. But let's take a look at this as it goes through. You see it's going through here. And if you can hear that noise, that whine, that's from the electromagnetic coil. So if we probably started counting when it went through there, we probably about 15 seconds. You can see that's how hot that is to start. Now, that water jet's gonna start any second now. You can see it blasting out the end. You can see how fast it's cooling the pipe. And that's how we do heat treating in our facility. All that's done by just that block. Heats that pipe up within less than 30 seconds. Makes it red hot. And we have to be done by 10 a.m. with this because of the power grid requirements, This thing right? generates so much power, takes so much power to operate. The electric company watches our gauges go boom every time we turn it on. So at 10 a.m. today in the winter time, we have to shut it off. And so we're really close to that time today. So I'm glad we got here in time to do this. And if we look over here, you can see the volume of water to make sure we're getting a good heat treat and we're cooling down this pipe as fast as we can. going to be our Ultra 3 or our Guardian boom pipe that we're making. All this water goes into a tank or a, a cooler. It cools it and we keep reusing it, recycling that water until we can. And we're doing 30 foot lengths at a time here? 30, 30 feet? 30 feet length. You can see we're still quite a bit here. If we get over 30 feet, the pipe works a little bit and we don't need warping in the pipe. And you can see these are all the blanks that they're working on. These are all made with the same chemistry. You know, our, this is all, you know, this is our boom pipe chemistry. And uh, it's designed as a high carbon steel to go through here. Like I said, we're gonna watch this go through here. That little tiny wheel leaves a mark on the pipe when we heat treat all pipe. So we know when it went through the facility and the date. So we're gonna walk over here. So since we can walk behind us now, we're gonna go over here a second. Now, what I, what I mean by a heat mark is so you can see it's hard to see these little slash marks this is a, a code but if we follow it over here there's a cf and and the numbers here 
This is the code and the date of when it went through our facility so that if for some reason we have, you know, people are like, oh my gosh, Mike, your, your pipe is blowing. Uh, I can come over when I come visit you if we have a problem. I take the paint off this in a circle, find that mark, and then I follow it to that code. Then I can call our, our, our different guys at our facility and say, this is the heat treat code on this. You know, are we seeing more problems or more issues? This pipe's gonna come backwards and roll onto here, so we're gonna have to get out of the way. So is anybody else hardening with a magnet like this that you know of? Or is, mm -hmm. it, is it mostly flame? This is more expensive to do than what most people do. They do this with a flame. So they heat from one spot on the bottom, heat the pipe, and then it rotates really slow through it. We found that heat treating all around the perimeter gives us a more consistent heat. So when we cool it, it stays the same all the way around. When we heat from the bottom, they do get small degrees of temperature change as it's rotating through, so the pipe is not heated evenly and not cooled the same way. It cools at different rates. So what that does is it creates the hardness bands that we've seen in the pipe where we get the, it looks like there's a wave to it or the rings. We saw that on some of your pipe, you know, in your yard. With yes, your moon pipe. yeah, we call that, yes. Same thing. Uh, so we, uh, we have the same thing happen here. And so, you know, we're done with this pipe. As soon as it rolls out of there, this thing's gonna roll it up, drop it on this rack. So how, how cool is it now after going through the water jet? Uh, well, you can touch it in a second. Uh, we'll go there a little reservedly to see. <laughs> since it was just at 1600. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> so that's the pipe we just made. Yeah, it was just heat treated. Now, this pipe, if we were using non-heat treated pipe, it's the same pipe. We make it all with the same chemistry. We just don't heat treat it, right? So what is so, this on a hardness scale? Like a 63 H, or no, 57 HRC? Somewhere around there. And, and before heat treating, where would it fall in at? Probably 30s. So it essentially doubles the hardness of the pipe. Yeah. And it more than doubles the life of the product. That's why, you know, when we're looking at stuff, I'll often say to guys, do your people take care of their reducers? Do they lose it all the time? And if the answer is no, 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 then we should be buying heat treated reducers. We should be buying heat treated elbows like in the bottom back of trailer pumps and stuff. You know, it'll last a lot longer. The pressure rating's higher, it's stronger. Right. All around, it's a better product. Same thing with the pipe. Heat treated pipe is not double the cost, but it'll more than double the life of, you know, the uh, pipe that you're using. Okay. And also I know for like, uh a high rise application it increases the um the pressure the maximum pressure right. rating as well so correct? like this pipe non-heat treated is rated about 190 bar if it's heat treated it's 375 bar wow. where no pump goes to that pressure rating. right so it's more so the the metric ends on a boom pump application that are limiting the pressure rather than the pipeline body is that yes, fair to say that is it exactly is okay. right so if we use the same pipe and we put heavy duty ends on it it has a much higher pressure rating than uh, the metric ends. I want to say it's around 150, 180, you know, for seven gauge pipe that's ultra three with heavy, uh, with heavy duty ends. But if we put a metric end on it, the highest we can go is 100 bar. And is that strictly because the heavy duty end has a taller lip? Correct. It is. We okay. get more engagement on the clamp as it goes over the edge. If you look at them, you can see the heavy duty edge is slightly taller. So it's more clamp engagement. The metric ends don't allow for the clamp engagement. Okay, okay. We'll probably talk more about that when we go to the burst tank later on. Oh yeah. And blow yeah. some stuff up. Yeah. We're gonna have some fun. Yeah. You don't wanna miss that. That's gonna be the best part of the video, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. let's walk out of here. Yep, so when we do harness tests, uh, every single heat treated pipe that we um, heat treat here, we run through a micro hardness testing machine, and that's what this is. So um, we, it's all automated, we can set it up, and then it takes um, seven rows of um, hits all along the wall thickness. You can see that, and then uh, we map it out. I don't have a graph in front of me, I can go get one. Um, so 
we can't put this piece of metal, you know, inside the machine and they're all funky shaped and it could be radiuses. Yeah. So there's put in this little hockey puck. Yep. And can you see those little dots in there? Too? Yep. Okay. That's hard. Those are the dots for the hardness testing where that machine presses down on it and oh, it checks to so see how the, much how, pressure. Uh, yeah, it checks to see the, actually it checks to see the, uh, like how wide the, the depth. The so you can see the radius in the pipe. So this is the outside and that's the inside. Yep, yep. So it's, it's going to be harder on the inside and as we work towards the outside, it's going to get, get a little softer. softer. Yeah, okay. so what happens is, yeah, it, the machine makes an indent and if it's a soft pipe, the indent goes down more. So the hole is bigger. So that's what's Okay, and how often do you guys run these tests? Like every batch of pipe? Every, every, heat, every heat we get in for heat treated pipe. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. Yep, so we get in a batch of pipe. If there's a couple different heats, we'll run one for each heat. We just want to confirm that the the that the that um, heat, the chemistry is good, and then that the uh, machine is running well, so. Um, this is our quarter wall heat treated, similar to um, what we just saw in Echev. Um, and this is tricky. They, they were, let's see if I uh, you can't see it very well, but again, you have, this is the ID, this is the OD, and as you saw in the other video, they have about seven hits all along the profile of the um, of the wall, and what this is, is it averages those seven, so each dot is an average of each of those seven um, hits, and then as you see, it goes, this is the ID and this is the OD, and you can see very hard on the ID, tapers down to soft on the OD to help the pressure, so. Oh, so the red is the average of the hits. Exactly. Oh, so it was right at like 57? Yep, and these are the, this, exactly. This is right where they advertise. 57. Yep, the and this is, this is, these are our bounds. You get to the outer and you're, you're just over 20. Yep. As we say, you know, it gets so, softer as you go, so we get that ductility and the durability of the pipe, because if we get it all super hard, it gets broken. Yep. It's funny, so you get a real drop off in around like That's the 50% range of the pipe, and then exactly. it kind of, accelerated wear. And then it kind of levels off it, and not a great I number. Exactly. So yeah. the first little bit is pretty good, and then phew, whereas with a twin wall, you're gonna get, Twin wall's gonna boom. be six, exactly. Twin wall's gonna be 60, 65 the entire You really see the benefit of the twin wall when you look at the profiles like this, right? Exactly. You don't get that exponential wear towards the end of the life of the pipe. Exactly.